everyone, it's Kala, and today we are going to be doing a little bit of science. We are going to be talking about binary code. Now, I don't have too much experience in this, so I'm going to be learning right along with you. There's this joke that while I was trying to put this video together, it was on like every single video and thread and that I could find, and so I thought I'd share it with you. There are 10 kinds of people in this world those who understand binary and those who don't. So I'm hoping that by the end of this video, you all understand this joke, because I didn't in the very beginning, but now I do. Okay, so a little bit of background of me and binary. Um, several years ago, one of my friends had a binary clock and actually taught me how to read it. And I felt so cool because I just saw like the little lights and I, I was like, oh my gosh, I can read this. I've completely forgotten. So I'm hoping that by learning more about this, I can hopefully get back into it and maybe get my own binary clock. Okay, so what is binary code? It's basically like a language for computers. It's how the computer can store and interpret information. And it's written in zeros and ones. So this is called base two. And this number system is kind of different from how we learn numbers, which go from zero to nine. So these ones are just zeros and ones. You can think of it like an on-off switch because when things are written in zeros, it means something is not present, but when there's a one, it means that it is. What you're seeing on the screen are is being interpreted in binary. Every single pixel that you see is being interpreted in zeros and ones. Every pixel is being told how strongly to show the red, green, and blue. And everything that you're hearing is telling the computer what the frequency and the amplification that your speaker should be vibrating at to hear what you're hearing. So it's really cool. And it's something that we use every single day without even realizing it. One thing about binary is that it needs to have a context. So you can have like a sequence of numbers, but if you don't know what it's supposed to, what the framework is, then you won't know what it's saying. It'll just be a random string of zeros and ones. So once you have a context, that's how you know if you have a sequence of numbers or if you're actually reading letters. Letters can be visualized using a sequence of eight zeros and ones. I decided to learn about this because I'm doing Secret Santa for work and my person is a big fan of computers. She actually builds them herself. And so I thought that because she loves computers and because usually she loves going to festivals that I would make her a necklace with her name written in binary code so that she can wear it to her next festival whenever it's safe to do so. So. If you want to make this craft too, check the description below and I have a PDF of the, what each of the letters are. And so yeah, let's get started. Um, what I have here is uh, to make this necklace, I have some pony beads. Just have a bag, a random assortment. I've got some string. Scissors to cut the string at the end. And then if you choose to do this, please make sure that you have adult supervision. To keep the string from fraying, I have a lighter. <laughs> so basically for this craft, you have your, your map of all the different letters. And what you're going to do is choose one color to be your zeros and another color to be your ones. Let's talk a little bit about About gifting so we had the option to have like a list for our secret Santa to just get a little bit of an idea of what our person would like and my person didn't <laughs> didn't write anything down and I tried like to subtly remind her but it she didn't get the memo so I had to kind of be a little bit creative and it actually turned out pretty well because I ended up making this video So I have my finished necklace here, and so I decided on blue for the ones and pink for the zeros. Oh, 
So my necklace starts this way and I decided to add purple to kind of space out each of the letters and I have, I don't know, I just put five here to start and then I have the first letter here, which is a K. I hope this doesn't come out backwards. <laughs> and then another space and then yeah, so on and so forth for first and last name. Um, I won't show you. <laughs> So besides that, you know, since we're on a budget and everything, I, this was something that I decided to make that out of supplies that I already had. And also I added this other book because she just got a 3D printer and this seemed really cool. It's the Zombie Apocalypse Guide to 3D Printing. And I thought that since she just got a 3D printer, she would enjoy that. So I'm including that right along with her necklace that she can wear. One of the great things about science is that you don't have to know all the answers. You are constantly learning and growing and you can be wrong and then once you learn something else then it's like now you know. So that can be really uncomfortable for a lot of people to understand especially if they're not surrounded by it every day but I kind of find it comfortable because it's nice to know that there are always going to be new answers to things. Thank you for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if there's something that you want to learn about, make sure to drop it in the comments below. I would love to keep exploring different science experiments and crafts with you. So I hope you have a great day. And remember, you can do science too. Bye. I almost forgot. If you like this geeky content that I'm providing, please like, subscribe, and hit the alert to get more, more content like this in the future. It really helps me out. Alright, thanks!